We got a Fox News alert. We've been telling you about that 12,500 number. We haven't told you about 12,552.96. That was the number that the Dow ended at on April 12th. 2007, quite a while ago by trading standards. So 12,552 is a number that, as you can see, the Dow is already below. If it holds to that negative side, uh, we will be in territory we haven't seen for quite a while. Back now to our board of contributors. So, Peter, I know you think that uh, something close to Armageddon is coming. Is there any news on the positive side other than that which is outside of our borders? In less than half an hour, if you well, can do it, Peter. Oh, no, come on. Go ahead, Peter. Well, look, you know, I mean, the market is going down. It's going to go a lot lower. I mean, that's what I've been saying. You know, even gold is down today, but the Dow is still down more than gold. So, so the Dow you're is saying, down. But let, let, me, let, me try to, let me try to fix you on a number the, the, here. Do you think it's going to go below 10,000? Well, look, I think it's going to probably go to 10,000, but more importantly, it's what happens to the Dow in real terms. The Dow is now worth only 14 ounces of gold. I'm 100% confident that before the year is over, the Dow will be worth just 10 ounces of gold. That's down from 43 ounces of gold in 1980, and it's going to keep falling. And by the time this bear market is over, whether it's five years from now, 10 years from now, I don't know. Peter, can but you do me a favor just for the folks out there who might not know? When you say it's valued at so many ounces in gold, what do you mean by that in a nutshell? Well, you, you, you take the value of the Dow and divide it by, by an ounce of gold to get a price. Because the problem with valuing the Dow in dollars is the dollar is losing so much value. You know, in 1966, the Dow was at 1,000. In 1982, it was 1,000. But people think, well, gee, it didn't go down. It went down a lot because the dollar lost a lot all of right. value. Okay, gold all right. Let me, let, me go to, let me go to Terry now just to say that w what he says about the devaluation of the dollar, certainly in the past 10 years, is absolutely true. And yeah, and you know, you don't have to be a best selling author like Peter to figure that out. <laughs> Millions of Americans in their 401ks have figured that out. And the international funds have been where all the money has been going. I mean, some, there's been some outflows in the last couple of weeks, but in the last two years, international funds have been the, the real winners here. So, that, you know, <laughs> intuitively, people have figured that out that the, the yeah, Dow well, and dollar terms are All right, is not Tracy that great. Burns is down on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Tracy, I guess since we are at numbers that we haven't seen since. April, people down there are quite concerned. Yeah, absolutely, David. You know, if we, and as you were saying, that if we hit, if we blow through that number, odds are good we're going to keep going for a while. There's a, there's a lot of negative sentiment. You know, you, you guys have been talking about this all day. There's a lot of unknown, the way, especially with the financials. Are the shoes going to continue to yeah. fall, so to speak? I and mentioned we, it a, a couple of weeks ago, but this is really the neckline and the head and shoulders top in the Dow Jones. It's a very reliable technical pattern, and, and this market's going to look very, very weak closing down here. I mean, we can gap way down tomorrow, you know, unless we get some kind of surprise uh, rate cut that might uh, save the day for, you know, a, a day or two. Uh, we could be a lot of trouble in the next few days. Johan, Johan, what do you think happens in the next couple of days? Well, I still think that the main theme that we're going to see here over the next month or so is volatility. The, the fact that we have all the bad news that we talked about already. The other part of it is Wall Street hates uncertainty. We have an election where the first real surprise winner was Huckabee, who is really not particularly Wall Street friendly. Then we go into New Hampshire, uh, or prior to that we also have Obama, which is also not very Wall Street uh, mm -hmm. friendly. And as I said, Wall Street hates uncertainty. But if we still, if we take the Dow down to 11,000, we have an intrinsic value that is at least fairly valued. So, yes, we may have another 10% of the downside, but I think that's about so, it. So, Tom, even, even without the, the housing is. and the credit card worries, there is concern about politics, too. Yeah, well, politics is, is like this, is this big, giant shadow over the whole thing. You get a Democrat Congress and Democrat presidents. You've this got is, a Democratic and, Congress. And, and, also, <laughs> I'm saying, if you get uh, and a Democrat but, president together, you're going to, and this is not the Bill Clinton Democrat. Democrats are talking about. This is the Democrats of the, of the tax and spend variety. There are way worse Republicans. Well, Tom, were if Ron Rubin is part got, of the administration, I mean, they're going to run pretty effective. Anymore, and, and, and Barack Obama sure isn't going to hire him if he gets elected. But here's the thing that drives me crazy. Listen, everybody talking about all the things that have created this terrible market. The number one reason we have a tough market right now is because the Federal Reserve screwed up. They raised the Fed funds rate from 1% to 5 and a quarter inside of three years. That's they didn't screw up by raising rates. They screwed increase. up by lowering them. If you them. change rates 525%, you're going to crush 
crush any economy, but, but Tom, and that's what's Tom, happening right Tom, now. They wouldn't oh. have had to have raised it but 17 times wanted. if they didn't lower it to 1%, which was an artificial. And they kept it at 1% for one year. Yeah. And now Alan, I'm Greenspan, not gonna argue with that. now Alan Greenspan has signed up with Paulson and Company, John Paulson, who's tell, been tell shorting, us the irony he's of been this. shorting this housing market. He made $4 billion so last in other words, year the guy, shorting the housing market. He's a good guy, but the, Alan Greenspan's going to come help him. So, so Peter, you've got to love the irony of the fact that Alan Greenspan's new job is with a guy who was betting against housing well, continuing to go up well, the way Alan Greenspan, Greenspan was. helped make him rich by setting the stage that allowed him to do that. But, you know, on stock market valuations, you're valuing the Dow based on earnings projections that aren't going to materialize, and interest rates are headed a lot higher. So when you try to figure out what the value of the Dow is, you're going to have a lot lower earnings and a much higher Tracy interest rate. Burns, Who knows what the Tracy, value is Tracy, do the be. folks down on the floor see a bottom to this? Absolutely. I mean, give it six months. You know what? This is a bear market or recession or call it what you will, but it's not Armageddon like everyone's saying. And, and you know who's Everybody right? isn't saying and, that. But no, you know, you, Peter. Peter, just coming Peter. up before. Peter. Tracy, go. Please. You know what? The traders are suffering because this is what they do on a day-to-day -day basis, but over the long haul, people need to relax because if you instill panic selling in these people, you're going to have a run on the markets, and that's the last thing we need. You know, so this is typically this been... Is panicking is doing nothing. Hold on, hold on, Peter. The ladies it's have rational floor. to Go ahead, Terry. You know, Gary Kay has some statistics that show that Wednesdays, for whatever reason, have been positive over the last year or two. So we might get a bounce, but we're going to close at our lows of the day, and you know that's not a good thing. That is not a good thing. No, I, I, it, it drives I, me crazy that, that people miss the, the, they miss the Federal support. Reserve, and the, thing, the other thing they miss is the power of the media, who is definitely heavily against this president. They'll, they'll exaggerate anything and scare the hell out of Hold people. Hold on a That's second. I, I wasn't told. Victoria Barrett, are you still there? I'm still you here. You are. Dennis. Forgive Listen me. I, I didn't know you were playing in this. Go <laughs> ahead. I won't take it personally. Look. Things are really rough right now, but markets climb walls of worry. We say that a lot, and history shows it's true. This Often market's the not best climbing. Hold on, Peter. Victoria hasn't had a chance like to talk. The worst time. Often the best time to get in the market is when it feels like the worst time. I'm not saying now is that moment, but probably sometime in the next six months is that moment. All yeah, right. The best place to go swim where somebody just drowned. Yeah, but, you know, you got to ask yourself, where is Ben Bernanke? We're going to close at our lowest level since April. That's when investment bankers started telling me that credit was starting to get hard, harder to find. A lot of these loans were, were starting to be tougher to sell. Yeah. This has been going on. This is a slow motion trend. It's been going on for nine months. By the way, it is now, it is now at 12,500. It may actually, Johan, close the day below that benchmark at 12,500. Would that, what psychological effect would that have on traders? Well, the psychological effect on these numbers are purely psychological, but it does drive the market. However, I still think that if, uh, unless the earnings in the next quarter are really below what's anticipated, the market is still relatively fairly valued. Okay. But, Gang, we got to leave it thing? at that because we are about 30 seconds okay. away from the close of the selling trading day. Selling is not day. panicking. The